half hour is on the mobile SDK 1.5. I'm not going to introduce myself again. Last September, we had an Unpack event in Berlin where we announced the mobile SDK 1.0. And it came with 10 different packages and a whole bunch of features. I think there's 124 classes in this thing, uh, over 800 APIs. It's very robust. You've got the pen package that lets you create a canvas and do a whole bunch of features to that canvas. You've got media control that lets you push content to a DLNA-enabled TV. You've got professional audio that lets you create uh, instruments. You've got gesture, that is through motion across the sensor on the front of the S-series devices. You've got look that lets you enhance the UI by giving it a new visual appearance. You've got visual view, which takes Android animation and extends it a bit. You've got multi-window, which is basically two instances of your app running in two separate versions of Dal Dalvik. Image filter lets you apply, I think there's 32 or 34 different filters to your image. There's cord, which is basically peer-to-peer -peer communication. And then there was motion, which tracks the device motion. The accelerometer is used to track how your device is moving around. So that was 1.0. Today we're announcing 1.5. Let's got a few more packages. And it's got a few more enhancements to existing packages. So you did hear about the SAP level layer framework in the gear talk. And Hod just covered the companion UI profile. There is an S health session this afternoon that's going to talk about the health SDK. It will also talk about activity recognition changes in the motion package. So the four that are left are what I'm going to cover right now. So we've got a thing called password. This is the finger sensor on the front of the new S5 device. We've got a new package called remote sensor. We've enhanced gesture, and we've added a new feature to cord. So let's start with fingerprint. You can request fingerprint recognition now by swapping, your, having your user swap their finger over the fingerprint scanner on the front of the device where the power button is. You can check to see if that device has any registered fingerprints. You can cancel that fingerprint recognition. You can register fingerprints. Any 10 of them will do. And you can validate those fingerprints. There is one class. Actually, there's more than one class. But this is the class that you'll need to use for the fingerprint. It has the one class plus two listeners, a listener to identify a registered fingerprint and a listener to register that fingerprint with a series of callbacks. And you'll have to include a new JAR file in your Android project, pass.v100.jar. So this is the call to check to see if this device has any registered fingerprints on it at all. You want to know if your user has even taken that step. If they haven't, then you can automatically call register finger. And it will open this enrollment panel that lets them scan their fingerprint in, and it will remember it. It does get a call back when that fingerprint is recognized and stored. You don't have to limit them to only fingerprint recognition. You can give them the option of allowing a password typed in as well. In either case, you start the identification with a call to start identity or start identity with dialogue. The second one is where you would say enable password, and it will pop up that window, that button, that lets them enter a password as opposed to a fingerprint. And then there is a callback. There is a listener that you register for the fingerprint identity, and there's a series of callbacks that will either succeed or fail. So that's fingerprint. Remote sensor is the second new package. Basically lets you grab the sensor data that's on your wearable. It works with both the Gear 2 and the Gear Fit. There are three events that it's tracking. 
user activity, whether the user is walking or running. Pedometer, it tracks the step count or gathers the step count. And then wearable detection, to tell where this device is physically located. So this is the class that you would use to use Remote Sensor, SRS, Remote Sensor Manager. You want to make a call to get sensor list to get the specific sensor that's actually tracking the type of data that you need. So if you want pedometer data, you would do type pedometer. If you want to know whether they're walking or running, you would use user activity. And if you want to track where the wearable device is, um, you, you would put in type wearable state. Then you register a listener for that sensor so that if there are any changes to that sensor, you will get callbacks and you can do something with the data that's coming back from that listener. So remote sensor actually uses the accessory framework as well. So you do need to include the accessory jar file in your package along with the remote sensor library. So this is how it works. If you're requesting user activity event, walking or running, it only tracks when you start to run or you start to walk or you stop walking or you stop running. There is a delay, a four to five second delay, in transmitting the data between the two devices. If you're tracking step count, pedometer data, the app using the remote sensor package has to initiate the uh, data transfer first before the pedometer data is then sent back. And it's sent back on a regular interval. It's generally five minutes, every five minutes, so that it doesn't drain the battery. And then the wearable. It actually tracks not just where the wearable is, but whether the user is wearing it or not. There's a heart rate monitor on the back of these devices, the Gear Fit as well as the Gear 2. So it's using the heart rate monitor to check to see whether the user is actually wearing the device. There is a one second delay between transferring data between the wearable and the phone. You can have multiple apps using remote sensor all running on your phone. There's a remote sensor service that's tracking all of those apps and keeping all the data that's coming back for those apps, but it also manages the single Bluetooth connection that's established between the phone and the wearable. You do need Android 4.3, and it works right now with Gear 2 and Gear Fit. So gesture. If you have any of the S5 and now that we've announced, or S4, S3, S4, S5 device, there's a sensor on the top that registers gesture motion going back and forth. So if you've seen those commercials for Samsung where they're swiping through pictures, it's using gesture. It's actually tracking the degrees of motion. So zero is down, 180 is up, 270 is left, 90 is right. It recognizes those specific gestures. That was all available in last fall's release of the mobile SDK 1.0. New in 1.5 is it now tracks angle going from right to left, or speed going from right to left. It does this by measuring the infrared light of reflecting off of the user's hand. The values for speed are from zero to 100. A minus one means that that sensor is not enabled to track speed. So the last package is Cord. Cord is real-time, high-throughput, group management solution, decentralized communication. It basically lets you do peer-to-peer -peer communication. It's doing a UDP broadcast to find all devices that are on that same subnet. And then it's transferring the data between all of those devices once they join the channel through TCP IP. So that was available in version 1.0. In version 1.5, we've added support for UDB-based broadcast or UDB-based transmission. So now you can move time-sensitive data. So if you're a game developer and you want to move game pieces very quickly, you could do it over UDP, video, audio. The new SDK is available today on our website, so go to developer.samsung.com and take a look. And at this point, I'd like to introduce Joe from Spin Vector, 
to come up on stage and demo. Hi. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tana. And uh, I'm going to talk about Party Party, the award-winning game we made that uses card as DK. The idea is when you have four friends in a room, give them three minutes and they'll be fiddling with their phones. So I thought, let's make them play with that. That's a video of the game, so you get an idea of how it works. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so you've seen both the game and a nice feature that I'm going to demonstrate later. Few words about our company. These are some of the awards we've got. As you can see, many of them are from Samsung, so this shows not only the love they have for us, but also how we are committed to the, to the platform and their new technology. They keep introducing. Finally, we've seen some code before, and using that code drives growth. That's the growth of our company in the last year. So as you can see, it's pretty going high, 80% per year. And we are hiring, by the way. So if you're a developer, you're interested, talk to us, please. These are some of the games we've done. You can see we have a very good star rating. We have almost 3 million players now, uh, and I'm talking about premium versions alone with a very high conversion rate. So, Party Party. It supports up to four players. You can choose among a huge amount of character combinations. And it's based on mini games, so very, very simple, very quick to learn and uh, uh, to control. It uses several SDKs from Samsung, and I'm going to talk to you about them and especially how we use them. So, Group Play SDK, don't forget this. It's the best way around to use Wi-Fi direct connection. Very, very, very easy for the player and for the programmer. It took us just one day to integrate it, but it was an important, very important leap forward in terms of usability of the game because we, did, we didn't want players to have to fiddle with logins, sign-in, or passwords, or whatever. And card SDK. That's the perfect match for group play, perfect pair. So it manages all the channels of communications. You've seen something before, but it's uh, very easy to implement. In our case, it took us about three days to implement the card SDK. It can change depending on the complexity of your app, but it's really straightforward. And now with UDP connection, it's even better for a fast-paced game. Finally, we introduced the Pen SDK as an additional feature to create customized version of your character on um, devices with, with the pen. So, I would like to show you this thing, if I can get a camera and my CTO, Carmine, on stage, please. Okay. So, I show this on... Okay. So, here I'm going to create a group for a group play. Okay. 
I select play games and you see party party pen on my device. So maybe I should better go here. It's easier. So you can check the other screen as well. Play games on the other side and I run party party here. And that's a demo effect. <laughs> okay, let's concentrate on this one for the moment. Uh, I show you the kind of characters we have here. We have a character, she's a girl. I don't want to use that. I want to change my character. You see, I have a lot of different heads. <laughs> we got a very nice Lady Vader here. And I can also create my own design. So, this is something I've done earlier. I hope you can see that. So, let's add something to this. Developer day, let's put 2014. And let's maybe add a little star here. A flower and whatnot. Okay, so I'm gonna save this here. All this is done with the SPAN SDK, extremely simple. We just had to reskin. We didn't have to code. The, the graphics and so on. If I want to undo something, I can do it very, very, very easily. Okay, so I have my pink Vader here. And I start playing. So let's see both devices. The other device is connecting. And I see his cow appearing here. I can start playing, I choose a game, in this case a single game. So now we can play. All, all mini games are very, very simple. In this case, we have to jump. I can swipe anywhere. Not doing very well, okay. And that's pretty much it. All games are very simple, but if I'm not fine with losing, I can do just like this. <laughs> okay, so thanks a lot for um, following me through this uh, demo and thanks Carmina for helping me. <laughs> so as I said, it was very, very easy to implement those features. Trying it and getting it running is almost the same thing. We could add extremely interesting features to our games, close presence, connection, and playing, and get exposure, not only because of the award, but also in terms of store visibility. You know that the hardest thing to do when you have a mobile game is being noticed, but players look for the features they have in the phones they bought. So they look for group play, for instance. They look for S Pen. And so you use Samsung marketing for your game, which is fantastic. These very easy things can help you add a lot of quality to your game, get noticed, and get revenues out of your game. Like with our former game, winner of last year's edition of this contest, and now, uh, which passed now over 1.7 million premium players. Okay, so happy coding and thanks a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm.